Hello there. This is Tony Schwartz speaking. As a child, I remember hearing the expression, children should be seen and not heard. And in a way, I felt the people that said this really never listened to children. I personally like listening to people, and I find listening to children a wonderful experience, and I like to record children. I'd like to make a few suggestions as to how you might go about this. Uh, one thing I think is very important, and that is not to record on several tracks on a tape. If you were to record on several of the tracks in different directions, you would get mixed up and you would inadvertently cut into one track while you were editing the other. So record only in one direction. And I'd like to show you what editing can do. Here, first, is a complete tape. Then you put it in the oven, then you cook it for a few minutes, then you take it out, hold it with the pot handles, then cool it off, and if you want to eat it and it's all cool off, eat it. What kind of cake is that? That's, um, 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 vanilla cake. Oh. But I'm making a chocolate cake of that one. I see. Did you make a broccoli cake one time? What did you say about broccoli before? It has broccoli um, icing on it, in the, in the icing. So flat over, then top, cool off. Make it, then eat it. And now the edited version. I'm making a chocolate cake of that one. You put it in the oven, then you cook it for a few minutes, then you take it out, hold it with the pot handles, then cool it off. And if you want to eat it and it's all cool off, eat it. It has broccoli um, icing on it. I think the edited version is shorter and clearer and gets the idea across quicker. The tape recorder sold today can record at various speeds, and I'd say if you're going to buy a new one, buy one that records at the fastest possible speed. For instance, if they come with seven and a half inches per second, get that one. Recently, I purchased a $180 recorder, and I thought that you might like to see how this recorder sounds at the various speeds it will record at. Here is how my voice sounds on a self-powered, completely portable recorder costing about $180, and I'm recording with a microphone supplied with a recorder at a speed of 1 and 7 eighth inches per second. Here is how my voice sounds on a self-powered, completely portable recorder costing about $180. Recording on the microphone supplied with the recorder at a speed of 3 and 3 quarter inches per second. Here is how my voice sounds on a self-powered, completely portable recorder costing about $180. I'm recording on the microphone supplied with a recorder and at a speed of seven and a half inches per second. The microphone supplied with this $180 recorder, strangely, will not give you all the quality that this recorder is capable of. So let's try a microphone that costs $114 on this same recorder and see if we can hear the difference. This is now the sound of my voice as recorded on a $114 microphone going into a $180 recorder. Of course, the quality of the record listening equipment you listen to this record on will also affect the quality of this sound. The better the equipment, the more apparent will be the differences between the recordings made at the different speeds and with the different microphones. So you can see that the faster the speed, the better quality, and the better microphone, the better quality. Also, an advantage of the faster speed is that it's very helpful in editing because you have more tape on which the words take place, and you can cut between them with, uh, between the words with greater ease. Microphones come in various types, and they are in a way similar to wide-angle and telephoto lenses. There are the cardioid microphones and the omnidirectional microphones. The cardioid is a directional microphone that uh, picks up sound mainly from the front and rejects sound from the rear, and the omnidirectional records sound fairly equally from all around. The microphone I am recording on now is actually a cardioid microphone, and if I were to turn it around as I talk, I'm doing this very slowly, talking at the same level, and turning the microphone around, and I'm now talking into the rear of this microphone. Well, when I do that, you see it's fairly hard to hear. 
And this actually means that when I talk into the front of the microphone, it is rejecting sounds in the rear. And this is very good where there are other people talking in a room or where there's traffic going by on a street or where there might be an air conditioner in the room or something like that or some sound that you don't want to record. You then can talk into the front of the microphone and put the annoying sound to the back of the microphone and have a clear recording. Years ago, people used to think that the studio was a perfect place to record in. In a way, I think that studios were designed for silence and one can find much more interest in recording in various places. Actually, the sound of the sound can be of additional interest in the recording. And so I'd like to now take a quality recorder, portable recorder, battery-powered recorder, and just walk through my home. I'm now recording in my living room. And this is a room with carpeting and soft furniture. We don't have too many drapes. I am now going to walk into our kitchen. There is less soft material around, less than in the living room. There is no carpeting here. There is only a linoleum floor and the plaster walls and ceiling. And I'm now going to walk into a little vestibule going out into the public hall. Now this is a little 4x4 four four vestibule and I'm opening the door and going out into our public hall. Now here I'm in a hall that has tile floors and uh, marble steps going upstairs and cement wall and a big glass door and I think it sounds much more reverberant in that there is less material absorbing the sound. Now I'm going to walk out to the street, and it's a windy day. I'm going to put a windscreen on the recorder to prevent the wind from affecting it. Okay, I'm out in the street now, and the windscreen seems to be needed because uh, the wind is quite strong. If I hold the microphone close to me, you won't notice all the noise, but if I were to hold it the same distance away, I had it in the house, you can hear all the surrounding sound, the traffic on the street. There's a brick building across the street and uh, the cement of the sidewalk in the street. Well, that's the way materials and architecture or surrounding areas can affect sound. I'm going back into the house and back down again to my studio. The other day my wife and I were driving our three and a half year old daughter to school and I recorded her in the car. Mommy, now you, you follow the words with me but you don't really sing. You only hum, hum of the words. Hum of the words. And she was to ride in a bus. Oh, what fun it was to go, ho, ho, ho. And the summer we were singing green trees. The rumble in the car could actually be quite disturbing. And if you wanted to clear up a recording like that, you could re-record it through your amplifier into another recorder. And by adjusting your tone control, you could take out some of the bass end and thereby come out with a clear recording like this. Mommy, now you, you follow the words with me, but you don't really sing. You only hum, hum of the words. Hum of the words, and she was to ride in a bus. Oh, what fun it was to go, ho, 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 and the summer we were seeing green trees. That beautiful. On the rest of this side, I'd like to show you how you can take your tapes and put together stories from the experiences you record. 
One day a friend of ours phoned and told us that her seven-and-a-half-year-old son's turtle named Tony had died. She asked me if I could have a funeral for her son's turtle in our backyard. And when they came over, I wanted to get the full story on tape. And she told me that little Daryl started to cry when the turtle died, and she couldn't really console him. And he just couldn't console him. You know, he was sobbing, and uh, really, uh, he just couldn't be consoled about the, accepting the fact that this turtle had died, accepting the death of the turtle. And finally, um, I began to talk to him about the possibility of having a funeral for the turtle. And this seemed to calm him down, the very thought that the turtle could, you know, he could visit the grave of the turtle. We discussed having a funeral where he could visit the grave of the turtle. Somehow this seemed to make him feel a little better. Also, I told Daryl the turtle would go to turtle heaven, and this also consoled him very much. And the turtle wouldn't be sick anymore. The turtle would be well once he went to turtle heaven. This was also very consoling to him, and the very thought that he could take part in a funeral and the burial of the turtle was a very consoling thing to him. Well, Daryl's mother and Daryl and... Uh, Daryl's little sister came over. They brought along the turtle in a box and a little flag and a piece of wood and a little clarinet, a plastic clarinet. And uh, before going out into our yard to uh, have the funeral service, I wanted to speak with Daryl and I did. Who died? My turtle, Tony. Can you tell me what happened? My well, he, he got a sore shell, and he tried to save him by giving him hamburger and things. But he died. And so we're going to get a piece of wood and write what happened and everything. And uh, he's putting it in a box, and we're going to bury him. How do you feel about it? Not too well. What do you mean? Sort of a tragedy for me. In what way? Because he was in my family. In what way? Oh, um, in like a pet. Well, I wanted to know why Daryl brought the flag and the little clarinet. Why do you have the flag and why are you, what kind of music are you going to play? I'm going to play taps and the flag is because I like them. Like, a, it's sort of like, just like the President of the United States, except uh, when he died, except uh, he is sort of, but he's like in my family. My wife, Rena, and I, and Daryl's mother, and Daryl, with the little box with the turtle, and the flag, and the clarinet, went out into our snow-covered yard walked out in the moonlight about uh, 20 feet out into the backyard, and this is what happened. There's a spade. Now we should find a turtle corner, I think. Right. Why can't you put it near here? Near the no, tree. Over, over here. We can't dig here because the roots of the tree don't work. Oh, I have the crocuses right here. Right, then I think we'll have to put it right, right here. Okay. What are you doing, Daryl? I'm digging. Okay. That's all. Right. Give me the turtle. Why? What are you doing? What are you doing now? Tell I'm hammering me. down with the shovel. What are you hammering down? Piece of wood. What does it say on it? What is the what Here is lies Tony Cherney, once a pet turtle of Daryl Cherney, died February 24, 1964. All right. Now what are you going to do? Now, flag. It's just like a regular sometimes a gray. What happens if um, a big rainstorm comes or? It gets wet. What will happen to it? The flag. It'll, it'll eventually uh, go with the turtle. What do you mean? Well, the turtle goes back to, to where he came from, and the flag will too. It came from the beginning of the earth. Now what are you going to do? Play taps. 
a chewing gum in my mouth. That's the story of the death of a turtle. There are many things children say that you want to keep for later years, just as you keep snapshots. Well, some of them you catch and some you miss, but here's a way of preserving them. One morning I was awakened about 5.30 in the morning to take my little daughter to the bathroom. She was three years old here, and I took her to the bathroom and put her on her little potty, and she was talking to me. I grabbed my recorder and started recording the conversation. At one point I yawned and she said this. This is actually my yawn and her comment. When one person yawns, the other person yawns. You know, well, I thought it was uh, interesting the way she observed that when one person yawns, it makes the other person yawn. Well, there's the proud parent. Another time, I was having breakfast, and she said, When I grow up, I'll have a diet like Daddy. Well, when she grows up, she wants to have a diet like Daddy's. But with a tape recorder, you can not only record the actual things that happen, but, you know, in a way, there's an interest in saving the charming things that other people involved with your child will tell you. For instance, my wife told me this. Last night, last thing before going to sleep, Kayla asked if she could have an ice cream in bed. And then when I went in to clean up, she showed me the empty stick. And she said, Mommy, let's put it in the water. Maybe another ice cream will grow. And our former a houseworker uh, came back to visit Kayla the other day and she took her out and she told us this story. As we were crossing the road where we had to stop for the traffic light, so uh, she said, oh yes Annie, but you have to stop here. When it's red, you have to stop. When it's green, it's all right to cross the road, but when it's yellow, that's for sports cars. And finally, this one. And we got into a taxi cab on the way home. And I asked her if she would like to sit on my knee, which she did. In doing so, I put my arms around her waist, and she said she was very warm with her gloves on, and could she take them off? So I said, okay. And she felt my hands, which were very cold. And she said, oh, Annie, you're so cold. Don't you have any gloves? I said, well, you see, Michaela, I had a pair of gloves, and one day I was very careless, and I lost one in the taxi cab. Then another day I got some more and I was very careless again and I lost another one on the sidewalk so I don't have any more gloves. So she thought about this for a minute and then she said, Oh, but Annie, yes, you do have a pair of gloves. You have one from the taxi and one from the time you lost one on the sidewalk so you still have a pair of gloves. I said, But Michaela, one is black and one is brown. She said, that's okay, Annie. They will still keep you warm. Well, these stories are once removed, but well worth having. Many times you come upon a situation in progress and feel frustrated that you can't record the whole thing. You can actually try to re-involve the child and recreate the essence of the situation. The other day my daughter was talking with my wife and drawing something when I came in on the end of it. I got enough idea of the situation to run and grab my tape recorder and catch the end of it, which was something like this. You have to take a long ride. A long ride on a train, a long ride on a, on an airplane, and a long ride on a ferry boat. Take a lot, a lot of toys. 
There's no dangerous things. There's no nothing dangerous things. But I really wanted to get the uh, complete story, so the only thing I could do was attempt in some way to recreate it. And I asked my wife to uh, start telling our daughter the story and uh, see if she could reactivate her and get her to go over the same thing. Well, she did. And the thing that was wonderful, it seemed to be my daughter's idea, a three-and-a-half-year-old's idea, of utopia. Kayla painted the city of Antwerp, and she told me why it's such a wonderful place to live. We got there first by airplane. No, first by, first by train. By train. Then by airplane, then by ferry boat. I see, and it took a long time to get there. A long time, a long time on the train, a long time on the airplane, and a long time on the ferry boat. And we got to the city of? Antwerp. In a few weeks. It took a long time. In a few weeks. And it was wonderful in the city of Antwerp because there were no fighting men, and there were no dinosaurs, and there were no swords, and there was no killing. And there what was else, Kayla? And no, you do the rest of it. And if you leave any out, I'm going to tell it. And there were no sharp knives. No pins, and no fighting men, no killing men, no dinosaurs, no, um, no, no sharp needles, no pins, no um, medicines, and no, and no aspirin. They were just good things, like, like butter knives. They are just butter knives. The land of Antwerp and the land of butter knives seems to be my daughter's idea of utopia. No dangerous things, just butter knives. They are just butter knives. I think one land of utopia is having a three-and-a-half-year-old around the house, and another is being able to hear the sound of children. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down and read pastures. He Glory me be to the Father, no and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Atta, and an I, and the Holy Ghost. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Who is God? Well, it's an invisible person, and he lives up in heaven, mm -hmm. up there. God is somebody who rules the world. He's sort of like a spirit, I guess, up in outer space. He kind of started all the plants growing, and he started people. Well, I guess he's kind of big and fat. He can see us whatever we do. Whatever we do, he has such powerful eyes. He doesn't have millions and thousands and uh, billions. And he can still see us when we're bad. He could be sitting on the table right now, but you can't see him. If he was a bad man, he'd make everything bad. He wouldn't have electricity. He wouldn't make people. And that's what would happen if God was nice. He's not the uh, what a lot of people think is just a feeling, but uh, I think he's, he's a real person. Well, I think that God um, isn't a person, but he's up in the heavens and he's watching over us right now. God is, is everywhere, and I don't know how he could do it. He can't be everywhere once doing everything for everybody. Everybody can't get what they want. God, I guess, he's just a person that makes me believe in him. Well, he feels like he's next to me, right next to me. God is a person that rules us, and he tells us what's good, and he tells us what's bad, and he's our conscience.
To me, I think of him as someone who makes flowers and green grass and the blue sky. Well, his job is to make us good and make us happy and make us parents good. And my grandma and grandpa, when they come and buy us presents, buy nice ones. Once I was hurt, so he gave me the courage to fight this boy that was hurting me. God is a person who takes care of dead people when they go up to heaven, and he tries to make our wishes come true and everything. I think he helped Mother Nature. I think the bad is the wrong thing. If you're good, you don't get caught in jail or anything. God can tell if you're lying because um, on your face it sort of uh, looks like you're lying. Well, one thing that I know is if you're good, you go up to heaven. If you're bad, you go down to the devil. And when you go to the devil, you don't go up, you go down. When I'm good, my mother never yells at me. When I'm bad, she does. I feel miserable. When I'm when I'm bad, I feel miserable inside, but on the outside, I just feel like I'm, I feel now. I think that um, um, there are more people that are bad than there are good, and um, if you're good, you'll live forever, and if you're bad, you'll die when you die. I think that there's a little piece of him in every single person. That's why there's a little good in everybody. Even if a person looks all bad, you know that there's a little, at least a little bit of good in him. I promised him that I'd be good in school, but something in my mind keep on buzzing around my head. <laughs> I keep on getting better and better. Rainbow shining in the light Because these twinkles all because Really things on cloud of dust You never can find out really such I don't know what heaven is. They say it's in the sky, um, farther than um, space. Heaven is some place where people die and they go up there. It's not fancy or nothing. It's plain. You don't come alive at heaven. You get wings, I think. And when you get the wings, you can fly all around. And Eugene says that if you wish something like that, it's in front of you. You know, like if you wish I had a black star like that, it's in front of you. If you go up in the airplane, you can't see it. It's above the clouds and under the universe. Um, it's just above the clouds. It's like... It's like down here, except I guess it's more fun up there than down here. I don't know. I guess I will go to heaven. I'm, not, uh, I'm just taking a guess. I don't know for sure. You go up in heaven when you die. So you don't have to pay taxes or anything. I'm positive. different prayers every night. Well, for my uncle who died, I said, please, God, take good care of my uncle up there in heaven. Amen. That's what I said last night. I, I don't know what I'm going to say uh, tonight. If I think that I'm going to get a bad mark on my exam, you know, and Mommy and Daddy will get mad at me, so I, I close my hands and I start praying to God that Mommy and Daddy won't get mad at me. I ask him sometimes to help me be a better boy and to um, forgive all my sins, the lies I tell, and um, things I do bad. I pray before I go to bed, and sometimes before I eat, and sometimes, of course, in church. Well, one thing, um, you have to kneel down, stand up, sit down, kneel down, stand up, and it gets you tired. 
mostly before I get a, a beating, I always say a prayer. God, please make, make my burdens light. Please put something into my mother's head that would make her forget about the beating. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down and read pastures. He Glory be to the Father, the and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was at the at and I, I, and the Queen of Mary, for of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed are Now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. God bless thy kingdom my brother, come, my father, thy will be done, my brother, on Eloise, earth as it is in heaven. Aunt, Give us this uncle, day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke Cow. and Jill came tumbling after. Have a birthday. Day. Have a birthday. Have a birthday to you. If you call the toy store up and you say I want a puppy and a whistle and a horn and a hat and a dress and a ballerina costume, that's what you get, but when Santa Claus can't bring you, you can't cry. Tony, if um, if the dog makes Willie in the house, if, he's ha if you have to make him a house broken, if he makes Willie in, in the apartment, you have to slap him with a newspaper, then if he doesn't do it again, he's house broken. What do you think of the Russians sending the dog up in the satellite? Well, I hope he doesn't get hurt. But if he does, I'm sure they'll send up a medical satellite. In school, um, uh, we each had to do a report on someplace. And um, I'm doing a report on Hawaii. And we're, and we're taking notes and doing research. This summer we're going camping. And uh, in the month of July this summer, I'm go the, for the whole month of July this summer, I'm going to uh, go to Brownie Sleepaway Camp. It's all girls. You'll miss my hair and it's very special for tonight. It's just the way I want it. It's in a, a page board with a high top and that's the way I like it. I'm taking guitar lessons and that's fun. I take drama lessons after school and that's great. And I've been working on the school newspaper. I might be editor next, next year. And I've been discovering boys. I'm the man thing sent to lay Who she is I do not know All she wants is gold the silver All she wants is I cream for To jump in my lovely So jump It's because it's my nice to play with everybody Because, because, because you know why? Because it's nice things to play with everybody just because you should play with everybody. Uh, one time I went fishing with my Uncle Herman and uh, you know what I did? I caught more fish than Uncle Herman. I caught more fish than Uncle Herman. I had drawing paints yesterday and I had them over here. You got them here, but I have it over here. You can have growing pains here, 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 here. When your bones grow and your skin stays. That's what it is. Um, I, I, I like to sleep in the night time because it makes me nice and tired. If I sleep, uh, I, won't be, I won't be tired in the morning.
I sleep with a lot of animals. A two million. They treat me rough. At every end of a prayer, you always say amen, and I don't know what that means, but um, I think it has a way of, of um, saying God, please. I don't really sing, but, but I do have a singing voice, but I don't sing. Well, it's just because when I try to sing, it, it makes me feel that I have a singing voice. Well, maybe I really don't, but I, but I guess I, um, well, I'm trying to make myself a singing voice so I can try to sing. Well, I think I'll be a carpenter. I think I would build something like rocking chairs and houses and, you know, fix holes in houses. Fix windows, you know, like that stuff. I'm going to be a scientist when I grow up, but especially an astronomer, because I'm very wise about astronomy. If we had no gravity, then the whole building would fly up in the, and it would go into outer space, wouldn't it, Mommy? My name is David. How old are me, Daddy? I like to cut the grass and and play with tools. I like to go to the moon. I thought I could make a job when to sell something so I could get enough money so I could buy my daddy his own tape recorder. Maybe I could sell newspapers. How old are you? Four and a half years old. You know what I do? I just get all of my daddy's old newspapers and see if any of the people haven't got these newspapers. And then when I, if anyone who didn't get the newspapers, I would give them to them. That's maybe if there was enough people so I could sell enough newspapers, I might I would wait until I got enough money. I'm going to sneeze. I don't know if I would. Maybe I charge $50 or $40. Or maybe $80. I'm so hot, I like to take my skin off. I heard drums and I and bang with the thimbles. Well, you know what I like to do? I like to, like, uh, uh, no, I like to, uh, you know, you know, uh, I like to make up, you know, like, 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 saying something, you know, like, nothing, you know. If they want to advertise something, how can they advertise it on television if they don't have commercials? Listen, folks. I know a man that has tired blood because he didn't use Geritol. You know Geritol, Junior. It makes you very healthy. And when he had tired blood, it was so tired that every time he got a blood bleed, you know what he did? He didn't bleed for three whole days. But when he took Geritol, he sure bleeded right that second.